previewing the House Select Committee's big investigation into the January 6th attack on the Capitol, the first hearings, they prepare to make their case to the public in prime time this Thursday. Joining us now is NBC News Washington correspondent Yamiche Alcindor, also the moderator of Washington Week on PBS, and former U.S. attorney and law professor Barbara McQuaid. Uh, Yamiche, first to, you, first to you, Congresswoman Liz Cheney tweeting just this, uh, just moments ago, that this is a moral test for the Republican Party, she writes, a test that she says too many in her party are failing. And she and Jamie Raskin and others are saying this hearing, you know, has to tell people why this is so important. Well, it's a poignant tweet from Liz Cheney, who has really weathered so much backlash within her party to take this stance. But she's saying that this is about democracy. This is about the American experiment and whether or not we want our democracy to fall apart or whether or not we want to look at what happened on January 6th and be cautioned by it and learn from it um, and really understand what happened. I think the, the biggest challenge for lawmakers here as they talk about these sort of huge ideas of American democracy and sort of the experiment that we're all living and benefiting from possibly being brought to his knees is whether not they can make people care, Andrea. There are so many things that people are juggling between gas prices and inflation, baby formula, abortion, and, and the shootings that are happening. These lawmakers are going to try to now have a narrative to focus the country's attention to say, look at this thing. Do not turn away and understand that while all those other things are really, really important, the foundation of our country, what makes our country function, is the democracy that we have to protect. And they're going to have to do that in the face of Republicans who are lying still about the 2020 election and who are getting elected and installing people who have um, the really motivations that were that were what happened and, and why people broke into the Capitol in the first place. And, you know, this... Barbara McQuaid and Yamish, some of the same people on this committee, some of the House members, Jimmy Reskin memorably, were involved in extraordinary visual evidence in the second impeachment after January 6th. And that didn't galvanize the nation. And in fact, it's diminished, according to our NBC News poll, since then in terms of the, the numbers of people who think that Donald Trump, you know, was responsible for that. So they've got uh, they've conducted more than 1,000 interviews. They've reviewed over 125,000 records related to January 6th. How do they pull this together? Uh, we should add, Barbara, they've just brought in, apparently, they brought in a, a retired or a former ABC News uh, president, a famed producer, to try to help them put this up and tie it with a bow. I, I think there's some value in that, Andrea, putting together a compelling package. You know, for better or for worse, the American public has been groomed to expect uh, high value, quick entertainment. We've watched too much law and order to have the patience to sit through lengthy hearings that are tedious in their detail. And so I think uh, putting together a polished show can be very important. But I do think that there's one crucial difference between now and the second impeachment, which is the passage of time and the work that has been done in that time. As you mentioned, a thousand interviews. I think what was missing then, because they hadn't had the time to complete the work, were interviews with some of these key Republicans, people like Cassidy Hutchinson, who was uh, an aide to Mark Meadows and was there to see all the things that happened. Um, the aides to, to Mike Pence, who have given reportedly very damaging testimony about the pressure that Trump was trying to exert on him. Uh, High-level Justice Department officials like Jeffrey Rosen and Rich Donahue, who will talk about this showdown where they were willing to uh, resign in, in the face of mass resignations if Trump persisted in a particular plan toward Georgia. And so I think that uh, based on what Representative Raskin has said uh, and others, I expect there to be new details about a conspiracy, not just the results of what we saw on January 6th, but all of the planning that went into it leading up to that day. And Yamish, they've got live witnesses. And what are the chances that some Trump insiders who have testified, I mean, you think of the attorney general, you think of Mark Short from the vice president's staff, Will they be some of the live witnesses? I mean, that's the key question. That's the question that everyone in, in Washington is really trying to figure out. Who are going to be the people that are going to be the ones standing up in front of cameras who are going to be testifying? I'm very interested in the vice presidential um, aides, because we know that the vice president being in danger, running from a crowd that was that was chanting, hang Mike Pence. After that, there were so many people who told me and other reporters from that office that they were particularly incensed by the way that this happened. I also think lawmakers have two big things to do. The first is that they're going to 
have to show that January 6th wasn't just a spontaneous event, that in fact it was calculated and be, there was time that went into it. And the second thing they're going to have to do is understand and make the public possibly understand that January 6th wasn't the end of the Trump presidency. It was really the beginning of a new phase of America where we're really sort of marching toward our democracy being in peril. So those are the two big things that they have to do. But again, they're going to have to capture the attention of a, of a really distracted nation and a nation that's dealing with so many other things. I didn't even talk about the pandemic and all the things that are going on there. So it's, it's a tough, tough sell. But it's also, of course, it's going to be something that all people in Washington, of course, are going to be watching. But what about the rest of the country?